So yesterday, I made a video you may or may not have seen. And in that video, there was a play that shook my world. Yeah. I love when there's a to like, yeah, back up. Alright, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> and what do I find in my emails so very quickly after seeing that play? <laughs> It's gonna be a good game. So what is going on guys? Welcome back Sockjaw to yet another Bronze Spectates. Let's get this out of the way. My email for you to send me any particular Bronze Spectates you would like to be showcased will be in the center of the screen for you right now. And I have a revelation for you guys. Did you guys know that you can actually download replays from your friends match histories now? I have no idea when this was actually implemented. But Riot have made it so that you can download anybody that's on your friends list uh, match history and a replay and you could send that to me. Now I would recommend if you don't want to lose this friend, you might want to ask for permission from them first just as common decency. But if you have any bronze friends that think they might get a kick out of this and a little bit of joking or they have a particularly bad game, by all means ask them if you can send it in, drop it to me in my email. If you don't know how to do that, of course, download the replay, go to this folder, it's usually in your documents click and drag onto the email, bing bang boom, you've got yourself a replay sent to me that I can now have a look at. Um, as well as that guys, if you do enjoy the Bronze Spectates at any point, please feel free to like this video. I'm trying to get to 400k by the end of the year. We, you guys are doing a really good job, I gotta say. So I'm just gonna put that out there if you wanna subscribe, join the Salt Drawer if you haven't already. I would really, really love it. But beyond that, all the self-promotion, shameless sellout Ross is out of the way. <laughs> oh, let's get into this. I am absolutely... 100% going to be mostly focusing on Talia for this game. Talia Jungle is somebody that I've been very, very scared to play a lot in the past. She's coming in way behind that Katarina. The Aurelius does get ignited. She's going to not get dropped. She comes in though. Katarina's been ignited. She's really, really low. Every single spell of the Talia completely misses apart from the Q there. She's coming now. Warwick's coming in, picking up that first blood. That's going to be the fear onto Talia. She has taken so much damage. The red buff is burning the hell out of her. Q goes down. He doesn't go down, the Chimpo does pick her up though. Honestly, this is a little bit of an awkward matchup for uh, for Talia, at least in the mid lane. It's kind of hard to see really any ganks coming out. I, I think Talia should totally ignore that lane, although she probably won't. Not a good idea ganking that, and Katarina's now got herself a kill and an assist along with Warwick. Those are two champions you do not want to snowball. Now, I know that there was a bunch of stuff that, was, that made Talia great. The fact that she could run around walls really fast with her passive. She gets like a lot of mobility in the jungle. Um, but she's super duper hard to play in my opinion. I have never really had the, the know-how to play Talia. So to see challenger players and all these LCS players kick ass with her in the jungle is great. But to see that happen in Bronze Zero, well, it's kind of a different different thing. I don't know why you would flash there, Talia. I really don't. Infinite Duress going down, and that's going to be another death. The second death of the game for Talia. If bot lane have just picked up a kill onto Tarek, but guess who's coming in? The, t <laughs> the, ta the gank master Talia. She has her ulti up. We know that this is going to be this is going to be it. She's going to drop this ulti. She's going to drop the wall, and that's this is the play that's going to be made right now, I think. She hasn't actually dropped it. She's just running through an entire minion wave for whatever reason. Drops it the uh, the the W. Uh, she drops a wall there. Kinda doesn't really do anything. What? Hold. Why? Like okay, the E was okay, right? But the O E. I mean, who are we trying to block off here? Who who are we trying to stop escaping? Oh my God, Talia's trying to one v one the dragon at level eight. What? What are you doing, Talia, man? What? <laughs> okay, there's not even any wards. Katarina just happened to come down. The the Ocean Drake just clapping her a bits. And I mean, I don't know if they're gonna continue going for that. She actually tried to ulti as well there. Wait, what? I didn't even realize that she tried to ulti. I don't know where she was trying to go with that. I mean, yeah, fair enough. Finally, though, we do have a call being made out here. We got a lot of pings on red side going on to this Ocean Drake. They want to go for it this time. And by the looks of things, it's pretty uncontested. Bottle lane and blue side are pushed up pretty hard here. And uh, Talia is getting invaded super duper hard. Forebear goes straight onto her. He's going to drop the Q. 
drop her. Oh my god, that is... I, she's got to stop doing that. It's just a waste at this point. Every single time she gets in trouble, she tries to drop the ulti to escape. It's just not going to work, dude. It cancels if you take damage. You can't ride the wave if you're if you're getting slapped and chomped on by a Volibear who's level 13. Or he was 12 at the time, I suppose. I mean, he's... He's farming... He's farming pretty well compared to Scion, at least. But at least Scion isn't 0-5. Although he does have 50 CS at the 20 minute mark. 50 CS at the 20 minute mark? I mean, even Tarek is farming almost as well as that. And that's just with stacks of Targon's Brace. Um, hmm. There may be more issues in this game than I would anticipate. Maybe it's not just Talia. I mean, it really is 0-4. Tarek is also 0-4. I feel very, very, very bad for this Saya. <laughs> Bizarrely enough, we had first tower coming out onto red side there. They managed to push down the tower with a little bit of luck, a little bit of magic, and they get a little bit of gold on the board, closing the gap just a little bit of that massive gold deficit they've been sitting on since all these really, really poor fights. Tarek, Aurelia, and Talia all picking a fight here onto this vault here. The flash goes out from the Aurelia as well. She doesn't use the seismic toss. She's not knocked up anybody here. She does finally use it, but the W is already, the, the E has already kind of proc. Doesn't do too much damage in that way. Still, Volibear's passive is ticking. Tari's going to stun them, try and knock, like, knock people, stun them, get Talia out of there. She ends up auto attacking the Raptor a couple times. Zoom. That's going to be another pick there. That's not very good, man. At least, at the very least, she didn't have ulti up. She probably would have tried to use. Now we know why Talia used it. I don't really get the game plan here. Like, did we think at any point this would be a good idea? I'm going to trap the Volibear in the cage with me. I'm gonna for I'm gonna make sure that Volibear's only escape route potentially is through me, uh, and he is two, three levels higher than me. Not the best idea in the world. Talia, why are you doing this? Talia, stop. Why did you try and contest the dragon after it already been taken? You're flashing out, but I don't know. Is, are you going to get away? Why? You, okay, we got Volibear, actually. Volibear was dropped. For some reason, I thought Aurelia dropped her elite on the red buff here. Warwick's coming in, though. Infinite Dress going straight onto that Talia. That's going to be the zero way coming out here. That was a nice ulti from Zaya, though. If she got the E off, that would have stunned maybe two or three people here. She's putting in work, dude. Talia is not so much, but Zaya is doing a lot of work here, dude. All right, it's that time of the game again. It's Aram time, baby, and guess what we got? We got Sion gearing up, ready to come in on this red team. He's going for it. The unstoppable onslaught coming down, knocking up that virus, but the knockup not getting put down as well from Sion's Q. Soraka is on point with these silences. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. Talia does get dropped by the Warwick. We've got Volibear going down. Saya is just getting a lot of damage, sitting in the back lane here, but Katarina's coming in, doing so much. 32 minutes into this game. We got the Baron Call from Blue Sight. It's 16 to 31. There is a 7k gold difference between the two teams. But honestly, I mean, the kills, a lot, pretty much every kill is on the two people that I would expect that could actually carry this game. There's potential in the waters here. Warwick, he's going to try and use his infinite duress. Get straight onto that Talia, though. He is not going to be able to smite that, uh, that, that Baron, though. They're going to pull off it, try and bring him down. And in the meantime, they, neither team have a smite now. They're going to have to make a decision here. They're going to try and burst it down. They're going to wait for somebody to TP in on that. They missed the Q from Sion there. But it doesn't really matter. War, like, Volibear is now in amongst four people. Zion <laughs> managing to get it. And then she's just clapping away at the Volibear. Nobody else was nearby. Varus and Straka both coming out of lane there, having to back off. That is actually blue team picking it up. You know what? Actually, it actually might genuinely be winnable. So we have actually gotten a couple of towers being taken from blue side here. Like two towers have been taken from them. And they're starting to like bring it back a little bit. Just a little bit. Sion Oli coming down Q there. Not going to be knocked up there. Every single time Soraka is on point with these. Atari Kali does go down. Zaya just needs to be careful. She's trying to go for that virus. She's going to pick him up there. Talia's just kind of rocking around the back lane here, trying to see what she can pick up here. Meanwhile, Tarek and Sion are doing exactly what they need to be doing, despite the fact they don't have a whole lot of gold on them. They just need to be in there, taking shots. This Karen needs to be dropped. Zaya managing to pick up that kill. Soraka has now caught from her whole team. Talia actually managing to get a kill here. She is going to get clapped by the Warwick, though. But that is still going to be... A three for one in favor of Blue Sight. Absolutely worth it. Never mind. Warwick's coming in. That's a three for two. Please don't make it be a three for three. It's going to be a three for three, isn't it? That's it. <laughs> That's a three for three. It's still maybe worth it, except they have Baron buff, so probably not. Oh my god. He's out. He's out. <laughs> You're not catching that, Warwick. No way. Maybe if we could see some pop off ultis here, maybe to trap. Like, even just. 
Right. Uh... Okay, then. Ah. Good. Oh, no. No, 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 no. This is not what you want. This is not what you want. You do not want to get caught like this. The stun goes down from Aurelia. She's trying to do it. She's dropping the ulti. The, 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 the uh, infinite duress completely, <laughs> the infinite duress completely missing because he drops it as ta as uh, Christ, dude. As Zai uses her ulti as well, but still they're gonna get the pick here. Varus is coming in as well. There, they're chasing down this Aurelia. If Soraka can maybe get the Q off on her, I doubt it. She's pretty fast. Soul goes down. She can drop a Q. That was soar pretty nicely, at least for some potential. Stopping of the Aurelia running away. That's fine. Katarina and Volibear were kind of like cutting her off from her base anyway, stopping her team from moving in to try and secure that escape. 1 in 15. This might be game actually. This might actually genuinely be game. Talia coming up in 15 seconds. So the 1 in 16 power spike might be real. I don't know. But <laughs> potentially. Come on. I'm ready for it, dude. I'm ready for it. Talia's coming up. She's up now. Are we gonna get the, the redemption wall at all? I don't even I didn't even see her last wall to be honest. I don't know what she did. If she doesn't drop a fat, fat ult we here to stop the melees from hitting the Nexus to her, I honestly don't know what's gonna happen. I I don't know, man. I don't think she's gonna survive long enough to use her ulti. Definitely not. One in 17, man. Not a single wall was was dropped that day that actually did anything. That's a bit of a shame. But that's probably going to be the game for Red Side, though. God, that was... That was not the easiest thing to watch in the world. Just to watch Italia get systematically dumpstered for 40 minutes. Hope you enjoyed it, though. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this, guys. As I said at the beginning, if you have any bronze spectators of you or your friends who happen to be in bronze, the email will be on the screen for you. I'll let you know how to do that at the start of the video. And if you want to help me on the road to 400k i'm pretty close to it now i would love it if you would like the video to help me out and subscribe to the sock drawer subscribe to the channel join the community i'll see you guys later hope you have a good one